Today we're talking action cameras. Now an action camera might be something that you already have, might be something that you're considering buying. They're great for cycling, uh, great for recording journeys. You'll see uh, a lot of action camera footage in our, in our Near Miss of the Day series, uh, which records dangerous driving. You'll also see them in the Pro Peloton. I mean, they're everywhere. And at the moment, I'm recording this now on an action camera. This is recording on an uh, Osmo Action. Uh, which is one of the two cameras we use a lot in the office. We've got um, a range of different action cameras, but we use this one, the Osmo Action, and also a GoPro Hero 8 Black Edition. Those are the two that we tend to go to for good quality footage. But they're expensive cameras. Each of those retails for over £300. And although you're getting good quality footage, there are other options much further down the range. Realistically, an action camera is available at more or less any price point you like. And if you're willing to brave the online jumble sale that is wish.com, then you know you can get one that purports to record in HD for about a tenner. But are they any good? That's what we're here to find out. So we've been on and we bought a few from a, basically a random selection of what is essentially an endless list of them. So let's have a look at what we've got. First up, we have this, the snappily named HD 1080p, 720p, 480p sports action waterproof camera photography for outdoor surfing, parachuting, diving, skiing, cycling, hiking. Deep breath. Now, it's the most expensive of the three at a whopping £13.84, and it's your standard two-inch action camera. Um, you'll see millions of these knocking around. Uh, it's got a five megapixel stills camera, 110 degree wide angle lens, those are standard. Uh, it comes with a water resistant case, it says, and HDR synthesis technology, ensure you get a clear picture even in faint light. So we'll definitely be checking that. Next up is something a little different. This is the SQ11 Full HD dash cam, which comes in at £7.34. Now this is a little cube type thing, but also claims to shoot in HD and excitingly, also appears to have a night vision function, which isn't bad for seven quid. Um, records onto a micro SD card like everything else, and claims a working time of about 100 minutes at 1080p, which I would suggest is fanciful, but we'll see, and a 12 megapixel stills camera. So there's a lot going on here, and it'll even record audio, and it's got a motion detector, and it's got night vision. So yeah, getting a lot for your money, possibly, if the picture's any good. And last up is the cheapest of the bunch. This is the New HD mini DV camcorder, DVR video camera, webcam support, 16 gigabyte HD cam sports, helmet bike, motorbike, camera video, audio recorder. <sighs> I tell you what, for your extra like 250 quid, what you get is a really nice name. Uh, this one's six pounds 65. Um, I read a bit about it. It says the mini DVR MD80 is the smallest digital video camera in the world. Smaller than a bit lighter and just about as cheap. Not sure that's a good selling point. It is very fashionable and wearable and matches all kinds of portable tools, making it a good little cam. It records in 720 by 480, so it's the only one that doesn't claim to record in HD. Uh, in AVI format for 30 frames per second, this camera keeps away blur and distortions. That's good. It can be set to standby for up to 250 hours until it is activated by a sound. So it's got some kind of sound thing. Oh, brilliant. So three different types of cameras and a total spend of about 30 quid. Uh, we've pressed go on that order. So we're going to sit around now, wait and see what we get. Four to six weeks later. OK, step forward in time and They've arrived, I've got all three here. So let's crack on and see what we've got in the boxes. Right, first up is this. This is the uh, SQ11 Mini DV camera. So this is a tiny one with the infrared and it is absolutely tiny. Oh, hang on, I'm dropping all the bits. Let's deal with the camera first. So the camera itself is this big. Very small. <laughs> the camera doesn't want to focus on it, it's too small. There we go, very small. Uh, it does appear to have six infrared LEDs and a full HD 1080p 12 megapixel camera in the middle, space for a card and a USB cable uh, and a couple of buttons. And that's it, it weighs about nothing. Um, chances of it lasting for 100 minutes on the charge in that battery are zero. Um, 
I've got some instructions which appear to be, well, they're okay. I think I'll have a look through those. Um, got a lead here, so a sort of proprietary lead for connecting it to the computer that will hopefully work. And a couple of ways of attaching it. So there's a little clip here. Uh, and there's uh, also like a plate you put that clip on um, to put on a wall as a sort of motion sensor. So we'll have to find some other way of attaching it to our chest strap, which is the plan, but uh, all good. We've got a camera and some bits, put those back. Okay, next up is this one. This is the, uh, the only one that wasn't a full HD one. There's quite a lot of stuff in here. Oh, including an eight gigabyte micro SD card included in the six pounds that I paid for this. So, Again, instructions, let's find the camera itself. So the camera itself is that big. So it's claims of being the smallest in the world are already nixed by the other one, which was even smaller, but it isn't very big. Um, there's the camera. Again, there's some clips to attach it to stuff like walls and clothing. And there's a little rubber case for it to live in so it doesn't get damaged. Some other kind of wall mount there. Got a lanyard. We've got a lead and that's just a standard micro USB lead, I think. No, it's mini USB and some instructions, which are okay. That's tiny. Uh, right, lightly in power button, blue and red lights. Chiang Lang three seconds, this machine is in the ready state boot. Lightly in the top, record stop button, blue lights, Chiang Lang, red light begin to slow flash, the machine began to camera video files, XZ degrees for 72 by 480 frame numbers, 30 frames per second per second. <laughs> uh, I've had a camera similar to this before and I know that the process of actually setting anything on it is quite uh, time consuming, you have to write a text file basically and put it onto the onto the um, camera which is a bit of a pain, but it works. So everything we might need in there uh, for our £6.65 I think it cost us in the end. Brilliant, and last up we've got this one, this is the most expensive one, and as you can see it looks a lot like an action camera, so it's come in the waterproof case, which you know, appears to be okay. It's a bit tight in there, but if we get it out of its waterproof case, you'll see that it's it's a pretty standard looking uh, HD camera. It's not, there's a lot of coating on the lens. Um, it's got your standard buttons. Uh, it's got an SD card and a little uh, screen on the back. Uh, you know, it's good. The case looks well made. It looks better made than the camera, actually. On top of that, we get uh, a non-waterproof case to put it on a tripod mount there. There's a kind of flexible thing with a sticky thing on it. Very helpful there for you. Uh, oh, we've got a bike mount, excellent. So we've got a bike mount we can stick it on. And we have got another kind of, another thread mount there that we can add to other stuff. So a, little, a few different ways of mounting it lead that you'd normally get and some sports cam instructions with a picture of product. Um, I reckon that one will be pretty straightforward because it's got a screen. So happy days. Those are our three cameras. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Osmo Action which is currently up there and I am going to do a test run on that one, do a standard ride and then do the same ride with these three cameras and compare the results. Let's crack on and we'll get going with our tests. Okay, so the results are in and I've roped in uh, our video editor, Matt, 
to uh, have a look at the footage and give his, his professional opinion. Yes, professional. <laughs> Very good. So we're going to start off with this. This is the Osmo. So uh, nice wide field of view, lots of good detail. I mean, this is a camera that we use a lot for for video on the site anyway. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, you know, we know that it, we know that we get a good picture out of it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the colours are a little a little too bright, but I mean that's that's nitpicking really. Yeah, and it's kind of true of a lot of action cameras, isn't it? They tend to be a uh, well let's have let's immediately disregard that <laughs> and move into this, which Whoa. is uh, this is our cheapest camera, six pounds. Six pounds. Six English pounds. I feel I like that is, it's crazy. That I mean, yeah, that's going to get lost in about two minutes. It's made of aerogel or something. But here we go, look. This is what you get out of it. Um, shall, I, shall I start with image stabilisation? Yeah, do that. N not very good. <laughs> um, I mean, there are some pixels in this. It's not It's not just the stabilisation, is it? It's the actual kind of Im the whole of the image yeah, seems the to whole. go kind of like like a concertina effect that, that's yeah. happening. Yeah, now I don't know how many people have like edited videos before, but there's like a warp stabilization feature to, so you can try and smooth footage. Mm. This is what happens if the footage is too <laughs> too unstable and it just like looks like the waves going across the screen. Yeah, um, it's not HD, but we knew that. It's not widescreen either. Um, the color is really washed out and Awful, awful, I think we'd say. I think, yeah. I mean, this is sort of what you'd expect for a six pound camera, yeah. really. Yeah, so there's that. Um, right, we're moving on to this now, which is even smaller and lighter. The little, uh, oh, wow, the yeah. little cube cam. That feels as about as light as a, a brick of Lego or something like that. Now this does say that it records in HD. And it did kind of record in HD. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at about 12 frames per second. I mean, this is, I, I didn't think the six pound camera was gonna be, was gonna be beaten in terms of terrible, but um, <laughs> here we are. Is, is this like, trying to film in 1080? Yeah, this is, this is in 1080 to be fair. I mean, it's like, the one thing that I've noticed, I mean, and this is true of all of the cameras, is look, you know, you get a nice wide field of view on something like yeah. the Osmo, so it's not, that important where you where you put it with these ones they're very narrow like they're much more zoomed in and it's difficult to get especially with, with that you know it hasn't got a screen yeah. on it it's really difficult to get it in the right position oh yeah for sure not, not that it would matter because i mean wherever you point it the picture is i mean the previous camera you you could get away with that if you just if you just wanted something for like our near miss of the day like to record while you're riding you could probably get away with that. This is just basically useless. <laughs> it's basically unusable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's let's, terrible. Let's crack on. Right, this is the third camera, which is uh, this one, which looks like an action camera. Yeah, this one looks like quite a few different action cameras that we've had in Yeah, had in, I mean, it's, it's, in a, test. Yeah, it's a standard kind of two inch yeah. camera format. And, and the, I mean, there's a couple of things to say. The first is that, <laughs> It says <laughs> HD 1080p on the front. It's not. No. Even when you put it in 1080, it doesn't record in 1080. It says it's got 110 mil uh, degree wide angle lens. It it doesn't. It does not. Um, so basically, this is these are lies. <laughs> these are all which, lies. Which is always a good place to start. <laughs> um, but in terms of the actual footage, I mean, I mean, in terms of the footage, it's the best of the three. It is the best of the three. Yeah, yeah. easily. It is um, still washed out. It is. Not very stable, but in terms of a wider field of view, it's better than both, yeah. at least the last one. It's slightly wider. I mean, it's just generally better, isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah. it's okay. And it has a screen, so you, you'd hope that you'd yeah. be able to and better you, direct yeah, it. You can put it, you can kind of put it where you want it, especially if you're holding it, you can actually yeah. like, you can get a, a reasonably decent picture. So, you know, it, it isn't what it says it was, but actually of the three, it's probably, the pick, and it was the most expensive at nearly fourteen pounds. <laughs> nearly so fourteen pounds, breaking the bank. So, yeah, that is our wish winner. But I mean, it's, it's a bit of a pyrrhic victory, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Really, it's uh, winning is moot at, at this point. So there you go. I mean, what we've learned is 
you can buy cheap action cameras and they are... Action cameras. They are rubbish. Yeah, rubbish. Much. They are rubbish, yeah. Um, my advice would be don't, don't bother. So there you go. Spend a bit more. That's our advice to you. But how much more? This, is a, this has been the very, very, very cheap end of the market and obviously we're pitching it against something that is nearer the top end. The action, the Osmo action isn't new anymore, but it's still a, still a high-end camera. Next up, we're gonna see what we could get if we spent all the money we'd spent on all of these three cameras, which is about 35 quid, on just getting one, and we're gonna find the best one that we can for that money. So watch out for that video. Thanks, Matt, for your time. Yeah, no I'm worries. I'm sure it's been very enjoyable for you. Oh, it's, uh, it's been an experience. If you've got any questions about these cameras or anything in the video, uh, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. Cheers for watching.